going to start off a cast with something even more special this week, and we're going to continue to do it week to week. We're going to start off with the thing that you're really coming here for, and that is parenting advice. When people think about what our expertise is, it's parenting advice, right? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's I'm, do- no many girls have called me daddy. I mean, I've, I, I know that I don't have any legitimate children that I claim to own, but I definitely have a couple running around in Europe. Franchising. Franchising. Um, but the fact is, we're, we have fatherly like, qualities to us. Pair Noels, if you will. Um, <laughs> I, if, if anyone was going to raise my daughters, it would, it would be you. It, it would be me. Oh. Yeah. I just want someone that they can dominate and bully because I want them to grow up to be as awesome <laughs> as their old man. <laughs> Fuck you. But for this, these are for Mitt. Mitt specifically, these are for you. So this is tip for Mitt number 561, and it is do not devalue vaginas. Sure, some of them look like sloppily made cold cuts that have sat in the wrapper too long. Sure, some of them smell like dead salmon covered in soy sauce, stuffed with old batteries, and left in the sun for a week. But not all of them are terrifying, monstrous creations of sadness. I don't want a bad roll of the dice to have you scared away from them. (laughs) <laughs> you know, maybe the first couple chicks vaginas you hook up with are both terrifying giger art of, and squishy, warm caverns of happiness. This dichotomy is confusing to a young man. I've been there. Just remember that eventually they normalize and you find out that there's more of a quarter are monstrous meat maladies from a Hellraiser dimension, but the rest are pretty normal and normal is pretty fantastic. So don't let this dissuade you, my young Padawan, as the old saying goes, there are plenty of pussies in the sea and you have to have sex with all of them. Moses. (laughs) Welcome, everybody, to a brand new edition of Rafflecast. We didn't even know it was Rafflecast until we are done recording the Rafflecast. So this Rafflecast is a re- retroactive Rafflecast, so the Rafflecast intro that didn't happen from before. exactly what it is. And as always, I, I'm Achilles, and I'm joined by my pr- crown prosecutor, my public defendant, my unable to figure out a fair way to give a place and deal judge, Shane, a.k.a. Doc Hollywood. Doc, what's good? What's good? Injustice! <laughs> movies are good movies are great and we're going to talk about a bunch of them this week we break down the oscar picks at the end we take some people to church and we talk about uh upcoming um announcements from the dc cinematic universe oh getting a and little dc the thing, right? in there <laughs> yeah uh, you know what it wasn't a cinematic universe and now it is and we got a bunch of new information on that as well um other than that what else do we talk about I think that about is going to sum it up. That's going to sum it up. It's a great episode. Make sure you check it out. Listen to it. We're going to jump into it right now. Holy motherfucking shit balls! What did we just see? Did it we was just the, see what we just saw? We thought we saw. We saw. Was the trailer for Suicide Squad? Um. Yeah. I mean, if anything is going to promote a squad that is pro suicide, <laughs> I'm for it. I'm just shocked. Um, not what I thought the movie would be. Why is Will Smith in this movie? Am I the I know only what, one's confused? He turns down Independence Day, well, but you, he does you, Suicide Squad yeah, as like you. Okay, listen. Let's look at Roland Emmerich's last like six <laughs> film show. Okay, right? I'm not. <laughs> I'm not defending <laughs> Roland Emmerich, but personally. I have a nostalgic place in my heart for Independence Day. Oh, yeah. It's not me a good movie. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I fucking love that movie. I, have, I still to this day will say when getting into a vehicle, I got to get me one of these. But I mean, why would Will Smith do this film where he's like so one confused. of a, yeah. you know, like six in an ensemble as opposed to doing, you know, Independence Day where he would be the lead and basically carrying the whole film? Is this it? Was it this or that? For Independence Day, I thought he just didn't want to do Independence Day. I think he just, yeah, he just said no. Either that or they couldn't pay him enough money. Um, I'm just like, if you look at, let's look at uh, Will Smith's previous movies before this. Concussion, he's the star. Focused, he was the focus. Um, After Earth, I mean, yeah, I guess that was more of a vehicle for his son. son. Yeah. A, uh, Men in Black 3, main guy, seven pounds, main character, Hancock, title character. I am legend, he was legend. 
Pursuit mm-hmm. of Happiness, he was the one in Pursuit. Hitch, it's literally just his name again. Um, I Robot, main main dude. Like I just as far back as you go, he's always it's always just been starring vehicles for um for uh, Will Smith. But now what, it's like What has he been in lately that was really acclaimed? Nothing. I mean, Concussion was his grab at an Oscar. Um, and then Focus, I guess, was a movie, but it wasn't like it was acclaimed at all. <laughs> it was a movie? Well, that's yeah. good. At least it was that. Yeah, I mean, it, it fulfilled the requirements of film in that it was recorded and put on video and released in theaters. But even then, I mean, that's about as close as it gets to anything. And that's actually where he started his working relationship with Margot, uh, Margot Robbie, who plays... Um, What's her name? Um, Harley Quinn in this. Because uh, they did Focus together and now this. And then maybe they'll do something else together. Huh. Yeah. Because um, he has, like, his Bad Boys 3 coming out. Um, and then an Amer- the American Can, which I think is another, like, central starring movie. I like it. I think it's super bold. I like it. I think it's interesting. Margot Robbie looks hot as a motherfucker. And crazy in all the right ways. You like her as Harley Quinn? I dig it. I dig it. I like crazy girls. She looks crazy. She reminds me of somebody and has that kind of vibe. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, getting lo- I'm getting lost in thought. But yeah, yeah. I, I dig it. I will be masturbating to this trailer. Definitely. So what, what's your take on it? Are you looking forward to it? Or are you pumped? Yeah, or? no, I'm actually excited. I, I do like Suicide Squad, and I didn't like the lineup they had for the movie. I was kind of, like, surprised. I still don't like Jared Leto's Joker yet. Um, just haven't seen enough. But David Ayer said that they stayed true to, like, the the heart and soul of the character. But, I mean, he's driving around in a pink Lamborghini with fucking tattoos all over his body and grills. It doesn't seem like they're staying that true to the fucking spirit of the character. Mm-hmm. Deadshot's a weird choice. I just <laughs> I've seen Deadshot in a lot of incarnations. It just Will Smith never ever came up in my mind for the be the casting for Deadshot, but I like it. Um, the I think a lot of those side characters are extraneous. I think you could have trimmed the team down for sure. Um, it's gonna have too many people on screen, but it's probably just fodder to kill people. Uh, and the they made the witch look fantastic. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited. What about you? What do you think? I don't know. Like, I, I haven't read much of the... Because this is all based on a graphic novel, You're right? You're a little bit. Um, so it, is this... This is all based on a graphic novel, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so I haven't actually read any of those. Have you? Yep. Okay, and, and what's well, your Well, Suicide Squad is like an, it was an ongoing, and then they've showed up in a bunch of different places and shit like that. Um, and that's what I'm saying. Like, the lineup is just different than the Suicide Squad lineup that I like. Um... But I mean, as as these things go, they're pretty, they're pretty interchangeable. Uh, is there like certain characters that you thought were more interesting or less interesting in the bunch? Like, has anyone stood out to you? Well, basically, Harley Quinn is the one that stands out the most in my mind, hands down. I think uh, like the, uh, what's her name, the witch character is the one that's going to kind of steal the show for people. I think visually, she's going to be the most interesting. I think the Deadshot mask looks a little stupid. Um, there's a moment in the trailer where, um, it's Harley Quinn and the Joker in some giant pool together. Did you notice that moment? He like jumps into like some big vat and she's like, and he's like pulling her out of it to save her. And I think that might be like their, their love origin story. Like he jumps into that thing to save her and ends up burning himself and bleaching his skin and making the colors on them permanent. And that's like kind of their origin story. They get made together, oh. which I'm okay with, but it yeah, kind of seems that like that's what's going to be the route there. Um, it just, the movie seems really flashy. Um, I think, I think it wants to be in your face. It wants to be edgy, but I'm, I wonder if they can do edgy or if it's going to be one of those fucking sad attempts at edgy and it's going to fall flat on its face. Cause it could still, I've not seen enough that makes me, makes me think that, okay, this is going to like a surefire hit. But I yeah, don't know. I'm, I'm kind of impartial, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I want to be reserved because I am excited by what I do. Are you excited by what you see? Is that I think that's the main thing. Not overly, to be honest. Um, Are you more excited by the Superman v or Batman v Superman stuff? Aside from how much I hated that trailer, yes, I am more excited. But part of that is just because I have more of a Interest, relationship yeah. with those more iconic characters. 
Well, that's actually a, a perfect segue. They announced the dawn of the Justice League um, and have showed off uh, new posters for what the Wonder Woman um, poster is going to look like and uh, what they're going to kind of envision as the Justice League. And they also sh- pretty much showed off the first picture of Flash, which I thought was really, really interesting. Um, he looks pretty cool. Like he gets a crass, classic like red suit design. Um and, you know, the other characters look the same. And Cyborg is there as well. And you also get a little CG render of um, Jason Momoa's Aquaman. I'll uh, screen share with you so you can see that. <clears throat> so have they made it sort of uh, official in regards to all the different films they're making, similar to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, yeah. So they're, they're pretty much, uh, right now, they're creating um their version of it by like setting up okay we're going to be doing a wonder woman movie uh there's here's what the wonder woman thing's going to be and then it's going to be a tv event called dc films presents the dawn of the justice league and it'll feature information about the new flash movie about the new wonder woman movie about the aquaman movie about the sequel to batman versus superman and the batman versus superman movie and i'll be showing new footage from um, from that movie as well, as well as new footage from Suicide Squad, which ties into it as well. Well, and uh, Batman's actually listed on the IMDb profile for Suicide Squad. Yeah, I, I figured he'd show up. I mean, you're not going to make a Joker movie and not have fucking Batman show up. I mean, that would be <laughs> that just wouldn't sit right with me. He at the very least has to make some sort of cameo in like cameo, a flashback yeah. or something. Um, yeah, uh, one thing that I points out, even though you're garbage owned by um, a garbage company, uh, is that there's no Green Lantern. Um, did did Ryan Reynolds ruin the franchise so badly that he can never be referenced ever again? Yeah, I really hope that they bring that character back. Like, you know, obviously they'll need to do some form of a, a reboot, new incarnation why, of why it. Why reboot it? Why not just have one bad movie and be like, okay, we stumbled on this one, but we'll figure it out on the next one? Well, I think... It wasn't, if you think... Yeah. Think about the way that they rebooted the Incredible Hulk, right? They didn't do a full reboot when soft they had, reboot, with, yeah. yeah, they kind of did a soft reboot with Edward Norton, and I think they'll have to do something like that with the Green Lantern. But you know, well, I think that why would they have to? I mean, they didn't have to change fucking Eric Bana. No, I mean they don't need to do an origin story. Like they can mm-hmm. skip the origin story and make it more. Uh, see, the thing about the Green Lantern, like the Green Lantern, is more of a character that falls into like the Guardians of the Galaxy type of uh, a vibe, a universe, which is more like a superhero science fiction adventure. Bro, like that's Superman's an alien. <laughs> I mean, yeah, true, yes. It. But I mean, Green Lantern doesn't need to hang out on planet Earth. Ever. With, you know, yeah, yeah exactly. So He's there's Sector so 232. That's all he has to worry about. So I, I feel like they could do a lot with that. They just need to have the right person at the helm. Mm-hmm. Also, would not make sense that if there's a Green Lantern in the universe, that he didn't show up when fucking Zod was destroying uh, Metropolis. I almost said New York there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is kind of difficult, yeah. Like when you have a superhero that is has that level of power. Um, but I don't know. I really hope they don't just push it to the side. Like I hope they bring it back. I, I think I feel like I read somewhere that they were planning on making another movie for 2020. Um, that's like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I get they have to like plot these things ahead, but like, why do they have to follow the same template as the Marvel u- universe and oversaturate to the point where the movies are no longer good? You made me not like a Marvel movie with Joss Whedon, like the, because they oversaturated so much. That's insane. That's not easy well, I, to do. Like with Age of Ultron, they were trying to get too many things into it. So they were they were trying to. That's not fair. We know that Whedon can juggle that many elements. We've seen him do it before. It's I think the problems the problems I had with that movie were not things that Whedon does that people have problem with Whedon doing. Does that make sense? Totally. I think <laughs> from from my perspective, the the issues that I had with Age of Ultron was just the the lack of the character development for Ultron himself. There was not enough motivation there. There was not enough development uh, of him. It, it was literally the issue of here is this, uh, you know, evil person. They're just evil because mm-hmm. they're evil. You know, the, that doesn't really give you a very uh, compelling antagonist for the film. It's no, it's no Wilson Fisk, if you will. 
Exactly. Yeah, it's not like Willis and Fisk. We'll like take a game. quick peek at the Suicide Squad poster. Um, I love it. I think it looks great. They give Will Smith his own little, you know, his own little area. Um, and obviously they gave the Joker, but it's interesting. The, I like that the Joker's standing alone. He's standing right in the middle of the X. It just, it's a really well designed poster. I thought they did a really, really good job with this. And I like that they're making it super colorful, kind of like faded steampunky, you know, run colors running. Like they're really playing with that type of motif. I dig it. It's very punk. Yeah. Very artistically, it looks great. At least, at the very least, I can't argue with the art design so far. Although I hate the kind of Joker design that they've done. Everyone else looks pretty decent. Like I really feel like they need to knock that film out of the park, and it needs to be a really good movie mm-hmm. to compel people to want to go to it. Like I know a lot of people may know these characters. They know the Joker. They know Harley Quinn. Uh, you know, Deadshot has been in a bunch of different series and incarnations yeah. of DC things. But Killer Croc. at the end of the day, that needs to be a really good movie, or it's not going to get the draw I think that they think it's going to get. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I think. Do you think it can pull on like just its star power? I mean, Will Smith, Jared Leto, Margot Rob- Robbie, Joel Kinnaman, Viola Davis. Like that's that's a fucking. That's a pretty hard hitter, you know? Yeah, like they do have a decent amount of star power, but in as far as like superhero movies that are out these days, yes, this is a different twist on it because this is all the villains and they're making the villains be the good guys type of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it is based on a known property. So they have done a lot of like, you know, market research on that and to know that it's not going to be a colossal failure or something. Right. But I, I don't at this moment in time, like I watched that leak thing that, that got released. I don't know. When was that like six months ago? Right. Uh, and I also just watched the trailer and I'm no more compelled to go see this than I was before, which I wasn't really at all. You know, even though I really dislike that last trailer that they released for, uh, Batman versus Superman, you know what, uh, we, we should say that, um, they, Zack Snyder did say that um, he's like, there's a lot more surprises left. We haven't shown you shit. But, I mean, there could have been even more surprises with Doomsday because literally no one knew. I, I think they just failed big time on that trailer. That's just a personal. Like, I watched someone's re-edit of that trailer and it was way better. You gotta, like, and this movie um, also, like, Suicide Squad might have an edge up over the batman v superman movies because like we've seen you know the pairing of david goyer and Zack schneider together kind of make that you know make their type of movie and and people criticize and fairly criticize schneider movies for being a little thin on the plot and like justification and logic it's more about the cool and the and the bling and the spectacle than it is about the logic and I, I mean, people obviously were saying that a lot more about movies like 300 or, um, God, with a uh, sucker punch. But, uh, I mean, you could also be saying that about Dawn of the Dead too, I guess. Um, if we look at David Ayer, on the other hand, who's directing Suicide Squad, I mean, uh, Fury, hugely acclaimed movie, uh, End of Watch, very good movie, Street Kings, and one of my favorite movies, Training Day. He did the original Fast and the Furious. He did U571. Like, he's a good fucking director. You know what I mean? Well, and he wrote those, too. Yeah, yeah. He, he wrote... He didn't direct uh, Training Day or Fast and the Furious. He wrote those. But, like, he directed, like, Fury and, and End of Watch and Street Kings and Harsh Times. He's a great director. And, um, yeah, I think uh, having his having him writing and directing this is great because we're going to get, like... We're going to get Training Day in a fucking superhero movie like that's fucking cool yeah like that's the one part of this that's actually compelling to me is yeah that is it, the it, director honestly yeah it's like it's the director and it's the sort of the, the twist on it doesn't it's, fucking it's having will smith compel you though like that's so insane it, it, but it compels me for the wrong reasons it compels me because i'm like why is will smith in this ensemble like you know anti super don't you think it has to be super movie? fucking good for him to actually want to do it one would hope, but he did after Earth. Yeah, fair enough. But that was for his son. <laughs> yeah, that was like his son's vehicle to do something with his yeah, life. Yeah, I mean, he really wasn't in that movie much. I, I, fuck, his other vehicle was much, or his other vehicle for someone's much, much better with the Karate Kid. Great fucking movie. And then he does that shit. Good job, Jaden, you crazy motherfucker. Um, that's what you get when you join Scientology. All right, so we'll look at the... Um, 
at the Wonder Woman logo. I like it. Uh, summer 2017, Gal Gadot will be coming out uh, as Wonder Woman. The new logo looks pretty dope. I really dig what they're doing with the kind of strappy style. It looks very Athenian. Uh, directed by Patty Jenkins. For those who don't know, Patty Jenkins, uh, she did the movie Monster with Charlize Theron. Um, that was a very good movie. She also directed an episode of Arrested Development, the one where they build a house. Actually, a great episode. Uh, a couple episodes of Entourage, a couple episodes of The Killing. That's about it. I mean, it's so funny that she has such a thin resume as a female director, and they're lettering her helm this monster movie. Um mm-hmm. Because essentially, because she's a woman, which is stupid. You don't need Wonder Woman to direct. <laughs> no, no. You want to make a real mark on feminism? Have a woman direct a fucking Superman movie. That's feminism. Having a woman direct a Wonder Woman movie is like putting women in their place. Like, oh, you guys can have your own thing over there. That is not equality. That is pandering and is bullshit. Um, but you know what? Although she has a very thin resume, Monster's legit as fuck. Um, and, you know, the same could have been said about when... Um, uh, Mark Webb was chosen to be the director of The Amazing Spider-Man, and all he had done at that point was 500 Days of Summer. You know, they take a chance on these kind of indie directors to bring some unique feel to it. Although, I want Wonder Woman to be almost a Herculean, you know, kind of mythological romp, and Monster is a gritty reality, same with The Killing, kind of gritty, realistic stuff. So I don't know if she's even more suited to this. Have they said what they're going to base that origin story for Wonder Woman on? Like, is that going to be an origin story film or like well, what's that going to be set? The, the IMDb just says an Amazon princess comes to the world of man to become the greatest of superheroines. So it could just be her leaving Themyscira and coming to, um, uh, coming to like New York and her being a fish out of water and her becoming like a, um, uh, a lawyer. Kind of like a like Thor that. type thing. That's yeah, stupid. Um, so Gal Gadot, the 14-pound Wonder Woman. Chris Pine will be there playing Steve Trevor. Yeah, Steve Trevor. So if they're doing Steve Trevor, uh, they're going to be doing um, the the, the storyline where she comes to the States and is like an emissary for Themyscira and falls in love with the hunky pilot from the USAF that intercepts her. And that's Steve Trevor, who will be played by Chris Pine. There you go. Uh, Robin Wright um, in the movie, who we love from House of Cards. Connie Nielsen will be playing Hippolyta, who I think she's played before. Um, she's the chick from Rushmore and Gladiator. But I swear she's been like some sort of Greek queen of some sort before. And it'd be it's not probably not Hippolyta, but she's been in like one of these things. Uh, I'm checking her IMDb, but I'm not seeing it. I might be full of shit. All white people look the same. Yep, yep. I'm full of shit. No, there's definitely something. Someone will, will point it out and tell me. Um, I, I'm not excited for Wonder Woman. I've said this before. I think it's going to suck. I think Wonder Woman's a pretty weak character as it is, and they're not trying to do anything interesting and new with her, and they got a super tiny petite woman instead of a curvy, more bulky, strong, believable warrior type woman. Yeah, and so you want Brienne of Tarth to play the Wonder Woman? Character? No, I want... Fucking Henry Cavill's real life girlfriend and professional MMA fighter Gina Carano to play her because she actually makes sense. When you, you're trying to say that we can't have a 110 pound Wonder Woman? No, I'm saying that if you want to have a believable warrior, she has to weigh more than a shit I took earlier today. <laughs> That's just all I'm saying. Cyborg also is a shitty character. Aquaman's going to be great. Uh, he looks amazing. And Jason Momoa is a great casting. Call Drogo underwater. Fucking perfect. The Flash, I don't know. It is disappointing that I don't see the Green Lantern on that poster. Is the Fl- They could have had fucking Jon Stewart, the black Green Lantern there, too. It would have been great. Is the Flash, uh, the TV show, funny? Yes, actually. It's quite funny. The Flash TV show is uh, very good in, in its co- comedic beats. Um, so it's probably as funny as the Golden Globe uh, winner of Best Comedy of the Year, The Martian? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good segue, sir. Um, yeah, I would I would say that that is not a comedy. It's a good movie, though. Great fucking movie. But Poo-tatoes. why in the world would The Martian win the award for the best comedy? I mean, because the Hollywood Foreign Press Association is corrupt as shit, and you buy Golden Globes because they are the way. But like, what were the other nominees for that for that award? It was best musical or comedy. I'm actually not sure. Uh, okay, Google. 
What were the nominees for the Golden Globes Best Comedy 2016? All right, let's take a look. Um, but like, really, what was the better comedy this year? The Revenant. Um, <laughs> so the best. Com- oh my God, Joy! Fucking the Bradley Cooper Jennifer Lawrence movie was nominated. Spy was nominated, uh, which actually is a comedy and was pretty funny, surprisingly funny. The Big Short, which is not even close to a comedy, uh, got nominated. And Trainwreck, which is a great comedy, got nominated. I say Trainwreck or Sisters should have like been nominated or won. In my mind, at least. Yeah, but it's so weird. Like, I, I guess we haven't really come to a point where they've started uh, having, like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, like, best science fiction movie of the year, you know. Um, do we have that award? Is that even in existence? No. But no best sci-fi, no best horror, no best fantasy, which are my three favorite genres. But they should have those genres. They should have a sci-fi fantasy genre. They should have, you know, horror genre. But they don't consider oh. those things. Like, And they obviously don't even respect the comedy genre. Because, like, specials, like, you know, Louis C.K. special or Tony Henchcliffe's new special, One Shot, which is all filmed in one shot. Like, those should have been nominated. But no, they weren't because they're shit and they're garbage and Golden Globes don't mean anything. So fuck you, Lady Gaga. You're still worthless. Well, they are, I would say in that, like, respect, they are different mediums, right? Like, you know, a stand-up set is a different medium than an actual film that's a comedy. No, because, like, I think as comedies, if you're going to rate comedies, a stand-up set is in itself a documentary, a film. It has its own beats. And even, like, some of them have skits in between and, like, they play out, like, movies and stuff like that. There's definitely an art to stand-up. Fuck, give stand-up its own goddamn comedy uh, section, then. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, give stand up its own type of. We'd award. give out Raffle Awards, but there's no movies good enough to get any this year, so fuck them. <laughs> we should do Actually, that. We should make our own goddamn say, categories. 2016, we are going to have uh, Raffle Cast Movies of the Year. That's what we're going to do. You know what? 20. We'll make our predictions for what we think are going to be the best of the year, and then we'll actually find out what is the best of the year, and then we'll get our actual picks at the end of the year, and then we'll Done. compare. Yes. Totally. Let's um, do- now, I got to stick in the comedy genre. Triple um, X, The Return of Xander Cage. It just got more badass. Yes, Vin Diesel's character is coming back from the grave for Triple X 3. Um, but he's not going to be alone. He will be joined by Samuel L. Jackson and, wait for it, Connor motherfucking McGregor! UFC lightweight champion Connor McGregor will be. What, no Ice Cube? <laughs> no Ice Cube. No, he melted. And uh, if this is not a good enough cast, they add the most badass man of all time. Jet Li is joining the cast of Triple X3. This shit just got expendable. <laughs> I, I had no idea that I wanted to see this movie. Dude, Conor McGregor, Samuel Jackson, <laughs> Vin Diesel and Jet Li. Like I, that's like the ra- most random crapshoot of like drinking p- like a party, like a squad goal. I never even knew I had. Like, I don't think I even watched that second one with Ice Cube in it. Oh, man. State of the Union? <laughs> That's the one. It, yeah. oof, it was something. It was. But I, did, I honestly didn't mind the first one. Yes, you did. The yes, you did. No, I, I didn't mind that one at all. Because, uh, to be honest, I had, that was around the time when Pitch Black came out as well. And I fucking loved Pitch Black. Pitch Black is a great movie. Triple X is not a great movie. So then when Triple uh, X came out, I was like, ah, it's all right. You know, it's not a it's it, I would imagine at least I hope it's better than State of the Union was. Oh, I mean, literally any movie on the planet would be better than that. But like the first Triple <laughs> X, he takes a motocross bike and literally jumps over the same pit five different times while explosions happens. And he does different moves. It was a BMX video that added like scenes from Fast and the Furious that they spliced together. Uh, yeah, that. That was all that same time period. It was like Pitch Black and Fast and the Furious and then Triple X. Vin Diesel was, was a big kind of, yeah, He was yeah, hype was as fuck for a little right while. Yeah, right I mean, I'm that. pretty sure Triple X is what made it come to a screeching halt. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. I mean, the fact is he didn't even return for the sequel and he did seven Fast and the Furious movies. Think about that. <laughs> you, I, I could not finish the new uh, Riddick film. Wow, that's ridiculous. It was not bad. I liked it. Like, I, I got like a this, lone man survival movie. There's like the, the scene with the side boob of uh, Starbuck. Yeah. 
And that was as far as I got. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, I got to pause here. (laughs) Unlike you, though, I don't like my women super manly, so she does nothing for me. (laughs) She's fucking, she's too scary. She's too strong (laughs) for me. You're concerned she could break. Now, uh... When I talk about fan casting, here's one thing I thought was really cool. Danny Trejo wants to be Lobo. He's uh, tweeting photos of himself, like Photoshopped as Lobo. I don't know if he's like the perfect choice for that, but he could definitely pull it off. The only thing with Lobo is that there's like a lot of like dialogue and shit that I don't think Trejo could really stumble through. I've seen Machete. And I actually really dig the new Machete trailer and Machete in Space. Looks pretty When decent. is that coming out? I don't know. I think this summer. Not that it matters. But how do, what do you think? Uh, Daniel Trejo is Lobo. Give me some love. Feedback. Yeah, I think he could pull it off. Like, I, again, I'm more of a Marvel Universe person. Fair enough. In regards to my, like, reading of actual comic books and graphic novels. The DC side of things, I've, the few things I have read, most of it's like Frank Miller and um, a lot of the, you know, the Batman series that were there. Um, so you're going to have to give, give me the, you know, the high level. What, what is this Lobo character? Who Lobo's Lobo? the worst. He was literally designed to be the worst. He was designed to be like the most obnoxious, shitty character. And then they were just like, he just wanted it to, it, like the writer had the intent of making someone so obnoxious based on like basically uh, making fun of the over extreme, over sexualized, crazy, savage dragon and uh, spawn comics and like the shit, like the Rob Liefeld, Tom McFarlane shit that was really big during oh, the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was just like a big fuck you to them. And he was going to make them, make them super annoying and kill him off. But fans loved him. They fucking loved him. He, uh, like, for some reason, they just like in the early 90s, he just like clicked and then he started like. Going crazy. I mean, he was like kind of uh, like his so personality. Is he a villain or is he? Yeah, yeah. He's a bad good. He's he's a ripoff of an overtop version of Wolverine. Like the crazy so Wolverine like they were doing in the ninety in like the late eighties and early nineties. That crazy like yeah. That that's what they're doing. They're pretty much making fun of him. And it, even like Ken Griffin said, he's like, I have no idea why he took off. He was supposed to be like a Punisher Wolverine hero prototype and shit, just be annoying, but people like him. And like that's that's like the basically the sentiment for the guy who invented him. And yeah, he's just like super powerful, super annoying, super like in your face, and like super badass. And did just DC mention not that give a fuck? Did DC mention that they're planning on having this character in a movie or making a movie about this character? Or is Danny Trejo just Danny like Danny Trejo is just campaigning himself? He's just going out there and doing it. I fucking love it. I love. I wish more people would do it. You know what I mean? I wish that fucking Channing Tatum, like, years ago, instead of, like, trying to do it all behind scenes, was just, like, tweeting pictures of himself as Gambit. Oh, wait, he did do that, and now he is Gambit. See how it happens? You manifest it, it happens, man. <laughs> well, yes, if you're a famous person. <laughs> no, it's it's the secret. It's the reason why poor Africans don't have Ferraris, because they can't pray hard <laughs> enough. Clearly. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, I think before, we'll, we'll probably, do you want to end off with uh, going through the Oscar list? Sure. We okay. can go through the Oscar um, list. We'll, we'll do that at the end. I have, uh, before we do that, I have to take these people to church. What? Oh yes, Lord. And welcome to Achilles new congregation. And I'm here to take you to church. I am here to preach and testify and letting you know that there are sinners among you. Oh yes, there are sinners in your rooms. There are sinners in your cabinets and I have to shame them all. That's right. In the dark Lord's light, I have to shame them all. First up people that I have to shame under the Lord's good light. And Achilles' white church is Sarah Palin for endorsing Donald Trump. We know you're retarded. You don't need to tell us that one retarded person likes another retarded person. And believe me, my heart was moved too as a child when I'd see the little kid with Down syndrome go over to the handicapped kid and share his Twinkies. But when I see in the political debates, I have no time for it. Sarah Palin, you are a sinner. And no one cares that you're endorsing Donald Trump. Can I get an amen? Amen. Next up on the chopping block. Next. 
I want to talk about the Oscar boycott. Oh, yes, we are going to be talking about the Oscars, but I need to talk about the sinners among you. How are you know that they are singers? Well, you can see their sin. Sin is black. It gets you in the root. It gets you in the heart. And sometimes it leaks out to your skin and you become an evil person. Or as I call them, niggers. Because the niggers are out in full force today. Yes, I'm talking about those dark-skinned heathens that are trying to boycott the Oscars because not enough of them monkeys are up on the nominees. Or can I get an A? Amen. No? Okay, no amen. <laughs> I don't uh, I'll, I'll reel you back in. I'll reel you back in. Now, okay. Chris Rock says that there are two different types of black people. There are black people on there are niggas. Now, black people are my brothers and sisters in this church right now. We have the blacks in here. We have the Asians. We even have the Koreans, which I d- distinguish as a separate part of Asia. Um, <laughs> but... When it comes to the niggas, you know, the black people that need to ruin everyone else's good time, they're coming out in full force and they want to boycott the Oscars because there are not enough black people. Now, if you are telling me that you are boycotting something because there is not a certain number of people of a certain skin color type. Now, to me, sir, that sounds racist. Does that sound racist? Can I get an amen? Does it sound racist? Let's see here. So people are complaining. Spike Lee, a- Jada Pinkett Smith said that they're not, not going to be attending the Oscars. They're boycotting the Academy Awards and call for a, boy, a boycott because there is not enough um, African-American people represented there. There's no African-American nominees. And here's exactly what uh, Spike Lee had to say. 40 white actors in two years and no flavor at all. He wrote, we can't act. Now, I want to tell you a little something. You're claiming that this is racism, that you are being put down because of racism. And I am going to tell you, Mr. Spike Lee, that if you say that there is, if you have a skin color, you don't have flavor. There is a skin color that you can have that re- that refutes you to having any flavor. That makes you a racist. When you say we can't act, we as who? If you consider yourself a separate group of people because of your skin color, that is racist. You are the racist. Not them. Not because there's not any black actors up there. There might be black oppression in all forms of society and very well could be in Hollywood as well. But you, my friend, are making the problem a thousand times worse by saying that we are a separate group. We need special privileges and you need to treat us different. No, sir. I am telling you that the church here that is deemed raffle and good that every man, woman, and child is created equal unless they are Filipino. So until you want to, <laughs> until you want to, I just listened to Hail Korea. Until you want to, <laughs> until you want to say that every single man, woman, and child is created equal, and that is what you are trying to protest, then I will not follow you, my brother. I loved Inside Man, but he got game can suck my dick. And Jada Pickett Smith, we all know your husband's fucking other women. And that's why you're still together. But listen, well, I, you're married to Big Wiggly Style. We're cool. I think, it, like, it, it, you know, the issue goes a little beyond that. And from my perspective, I think that in general, if you look at all the Academy Awards, you know, even in the last 10, 15 years, the, the amount of diversity that we have of people that win them, it's not very high. Uh, but then again, you know, yes, okay, it's an observation. We can make that observation. But I don't know if by making statements like this, if that's actually going to do any good to the scenario, to to change the you know way things are. At the end of the day, movies that are being made, especially right now, are based on what they feel are going to make the most amount of money. And if executives feel that they need to hit certain demographics and certain groups of people to make the most amount of money, then those are the types of people that they're going to cast in their films and cast in their TV shows. That's simply the way it is. The, you know, I, I hate to say it, but when they cast Samuel L. Jackson in the Star Wars films, that was because they were trying to get that demographic of people. They to wanted come niggas in. with purple lightsabers coming to their film. <laughs> they wanted that demographic to come and watch those movies because they knew based on market testing and market research that that demographic tended to not go and watch those films. And it's the sad reality of, of what the Hollywood movie industry has become. It's not based on, I hate to say it, it's not based on this deep 
uh, love for art and creating these films that are going to, you know, change the world. Oh, it's a fucking it's, business. It's a business to entertain people and to make a lot of money. But name That's a good black movie this year. Tell me, give me an, ex you can claim racism because listen, it could be statistical anomaly. Blacks may be 10% of the population and they may be underrepresented in this instance due to a random sampling. Random samplings will do that. But what I want to know is give me an instance where there was a good movie this year with a black actor that should have been nominated for a category that was not nominated. It just didn't happen. The only thing that I can really see uh, having a problem with is that Straight Outta Compton should be nominated for more awards because it was a really great movie. And um, the guy who played Dr. Dre should be Best Supporting Actor. But, I mean, that's just a personal opinion and people probably disagree with that anyway. Mm -hmm. Um I, 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 but I, I, that's like the only thing where I think there's a bit of egregious, but because he was a no name and he's part of an ensemble cast and that movie was more of an underground hit than it was like a blockbuster hit, it didn't get the same type of love. And that's just understandable. But like, wh where are the black people getting left out? I'm sorry, but you know, Creed was great. Um, but I wouldn't nominate Michael B. Jordan for best actor in that. Like, didn't uh, Don Cheeto win something a few years ago? Listen, blacks have won shit. Plenty of black people have won shit. Just in the last couple of years, there hasn't been a lot. But this year, there hasn't been a lot of African-American movies. Like, were they going to make Bridge of Spies with fucking Jamie Foxx instead of Tom Hanks? No. Were they going to make fucking Ant-Man with uh, Marlon Wayans instead of Paul <laughs> Rudd? <laughs> like, come on. I don't, I, I don't think anything's getting made with Marlon Wayans these days. Why wasn't Samuel L. Jackson Steve Jobs this year? That's bullshit. This is racism. <laughs> Spectre, come on. There should have, it should have been Idris Elba as Bond instead of having Daniel Craig. Like, oh, you know what? Actually, did get not Beasts of No Nation. There you go. That, that's one thing where there's some good black people in that. Well, and again, I think it's more of a <laughs> larger, like, industry and a larger, you know... I don't even like, think it's that it, big of a problem. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not even saying that it's a, a, a problem, but it, in as far as, like, speaking to the, the specific thing that uh, Spike Lee is saying, you know, you can't just, you know, have something pointed like that because the issue is larger than, than just this one you know, example that he's citing. Of you know, he, he actually does say that. He says the Academy Awards is not where the real battle is, wrote Lee on Monday. It's in the executive office of the Hollywood studios and the TV and cable networks. This is where the gatekeepers decide what gets made and what gets jettisoned to turn around or scrap heap. That is what's important. The gatekeepers, those that greenlight the vote. And the guys that greenlight those votes are based on the market testing and research that gets done when they... They don't have any personal preference. They don't give a fuck. Their, their yeah, preference Will, is what's going to make the most money. Exactly. Will Smith's one of the biggest movie stars on the planet. They'll shove him into any fucking movie purely based on his name. And we just saw that. We just talked about that, you know, at, at nauseum. Um, if it's true for him, it can be true for anybody else is all I'm totally. saying. Yeah. Um, now, let's let's go on to what uh, – so Will Smith's wife, you know, the Fresh Prince's wife may have been on um, – Team nigger, but on, but for the blacks, representing the blacks Jesus. is uh, Will Smith's mom, fake TV mom, Aunt Viv from Fresh Prince Bel Air. Um, she um, she gave a quote. Uh, yes. Where did where where did this article come from? Oh, it's Fox, right? That's. <laughs> oops! Oops! Um, there is, let me find the quote from her. Um, I'll, I have it over here, sorry. So Jen Hubert said this. There's the um, hashtag is Oscars so white. Um, I, I, obviously, that's just obvious racism right there. But if something is too white, you're saying that there's too many of somebody of a certain color. If I was like, you know what? Football's too black. We need more white. There's not enough white people represented in football. Everyone be like, get the fuck out of here. But when it comes to movies, apparently it's okay. Um, <laughs> so she said, she basically was saying to them, I, I find it ironic that somebody who has made their living has made millions and millions of dollars from the very people that you're talking about boycotting just because you didn't get a nomination, just because you didn't win. That's not how life works, baby. She continued, you ain't Barack and Michelle Obama. Y'all need to get over yourselves. You have a huge production company that only you could produce your friends and families and yourself. So you are part of Hollywood. You are part of the system that's unfair to actors. So get real. Like, did he have a movie that came out this year that didn't get? Yeah, Chirac. It was a shitty movie about black shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, it's just like my, <laughs> my biggest problem with it was just that the whole like, if you don't get nominated and you're like, I'm boycotting this awards, you did it because I was black. No, they didn't nominate you. You just weren't good. It just wasn't something that was good. And you got to accept that. And you just sound like a whiny bitch now. And like, listen, I'm telling you, I fucking love Inside Man. It's a great movie. He's a great director. But he is a dumb, racist sack of shit. And I'm going to close it up there. If you think that you need to have a certain skin color to do something, or if you think that there needs to be a certain amount of people to have a certain skin color to make something valid, you are a fool. You are not welcome here. You are a sinner. And I cast you out. In God's great damn, I declare all men be equal. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Amen. Church has finished session. You now get home to your families and let them know the good word. Thank you. You're welcome for Took that. Took the people to church there. That was preacher Achilles. He's a he's an interesting guy. He is, and I, I do want to add, add one thing. Yeah. Didn't Twelve Years a Slave win a shitload of awards? Too many, I say. <laughs> It should have only won five eighths of an award. Uh, now that we've uh, we've gone through that, let's make our Oscar predictions. Now, I was gonna say we would wait until the the Oscars are February twenty eighth. We got a month. I was gonna wait until then to see if some of the movies were coming out because I haven't seen a bunch of them. But I uh, I'm not sure if they're gonna come out. So maybe we'll revisit this and I'm, I might change my picks. But for the meantime, let's like take a quick uh, look at what we're picking for best picture now our nominees are for best picture the big short bridge of spies brooklyn mad max free road the martian revenant room and spotlight what do you have now are we picking which one we liked the most or which one we think is going to win i don't know what would you want to do uh i think we should pick for which ones we think are actually going to win the award okay that's uh that's sad no you don't want to do that no it's the way we <laughs> should do it it's just i like i have to Okay, that's fine. We'll do it. Because these are predictions, right? Yeah, these We're are predictions, predi right. Okay, yeah. So if we're doing predictions, we should be choosing the one uh, that we think is actually going to win it. Mm -hmm. But then we can also talk about the ones that we like that we feel are better. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Uh, so best picture for me, I, I think that, uh, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see if the, the, you know, the director of Birdman wins two years in a row. I don't know if there's any precedent for that. What else did he do? Spotlight? Uh, he did Birdman. No, no, what else did he do the, other than Birdman? Uh, the Revenant? Oh, is that the same director as Birdman? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, knew, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. Um, okay, so you think Revenant's going to take it? Remember, this I is the best so. film. This is best picture. Not best ah, director, see, best picture. It, it's tough because I haven't seen all of these, so it makes it very difficult. If he, if he doesn't win for best picture... I think Leonardo DiCaprio is going to have to win for best actor. Well, that's so weird how it like gives and goes like that. But okay, they let's do that. You gotta they make, totally do that. You got to make your choice. What do you think is going to win? I actually don't even know. Uh, well, it's not going to be Mad Max Fury Road. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Uh, it's, it's not going to be the Martian. They're not going to no. do that. No. Um, you know, uh, Won't be the big short. For sure. And again, it's, I, it's I between. I think it's between Bridge of Spies. Even then, I'm not even sure. I think it's between Brooklyn Room and Spotlight. And it's probably between Room and Spotlight. And I'm gonna say Room. You go with Room. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with Revenant. Ooh. Okay. So we got an SS on that, and we got an AA on Room. All right. Best Actor. We got Brian Cranston for Trumbo, Matt Damon for The Martian, Leonardo DiCaprio for Revenant, Michael Fassbender for Stave Jobs, and Eddie Redmayne, The Danish Girl. We're we're going with DiCaprio on this one, hundred percent. Yeah, I think, I think he, just politically, he's just gonna get yeah, it. Yeah. Um, I I I didn't see Cranston and Trumbo yet, but I mean he's good in everything. Michael Fassbender and Steve Jobs, I'm sure, is perfect. It probably should win, but they'll probably give it to DiCaprio. Eddie Redmayne is excellent in everything he's in, except for Jupiter Ascending. That was a really bizarre movie. Um, Best Actress: uh, Kate Blanchett for Carol, Lee Larson, Brie Larson for Room. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence for Joy, Charlotte Rampling for 45 Years, or Sorcy Ronan for Brooklyn. Um, I'm, I'm going to go in a room sweep, I think, and go with Brie Larson for room. People are really loving her in that. Well, I, it's gotten a lot of good praise in regards to the quality of that film. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen enough of these to make a solid prediction. But, but based I, on what you've seen them in. 
Sure, I'll, I'll join the, the Brie Larson bandwagon. It, listen, we're not basically, because neither of us have seen Room. I know what it's about, and I know that it's, like, you know, very intense and shit. But I'm basing this on her previous performances I've seen in her excellent work in movies like Trainwreck or Don John or 21 Jump Street or Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Um, she really moved me in those performances. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to stick with the chick who was the backdoor nanny in The League and on Kroll Show. So Brie Larson, you're getting the Oscar, girl. And that would be amazing for her. Um, I don't think Jennifer Lawrence has a shot. Kate Blanchett has a really good shot. Um, I don't know about that 45 years thing, about that ramp. Who's that? Charlotte Rampling? Is that is that ringing any bells for you? We don't even know. We're making shitty predictions. We don't even fucking know. How to <laughs> but this Horrible is how it is predict- every year because there's like a bunch of movies that no one's fucking seen. And you're just like, shit. What about the rest of us who only watch movies that, you know, come out when they fucking come out? Charlotte Rampling could be some old chick. I mean, the thing that's called 45 she years. She could be something where she's like one of those like, oh, I'm forgetting shit. And they'll give her an Oscar because she's forgetting shit because she's old. So she's no, been in movies since the 60s. So there you go. Oh, I know who she is. Yeah, she's great. Um, she was not. OK, look, if you look at the nominations for 45 years, she was nominated for like Best Actress Awards and like 30 different fucking things from uh, film awards and choice awards, critic choice awards. I'm actually going to change mine to rambling. Old bitch. Going to give her that Oscar. Yeah, I think they're just going to politically do it. Yeah. You're going to stick with Brie? Sure. Why not? Let's switch it up. Best supporting actor, Christian Bale, The Big Short, Tom Hardy, The Revenant, Mark Ruffalo, Spotlight, uh, Mark Rifle, Inspire of Spies, or Sylvester Stallone, Creed. Why is he getting... He did good, but I mean, he's not, even Stallone's at his best, he's still like a bad actor. And I love Creed. I love fucking Rocky. Like, why? Why? Um, okay, we got to hurry up. Um, okay, shut the dark. I'm going for your Sylvester Stallone Creed. Fuck you. Are you seriously? Oh, okay. <laughs> I did. All right. Uh, I, I want to say Mark Ruffalo in Spar- Spotlight. Um, I know it's not going to be Bale for the big short. He didn't really do anything in the big short. It's kind of weird that he was nominated. Mark was good in Bridge of Spies. But I think Spotlight or The Revenant might take it. Spotlight. Let's say Spotlight. Let's give let's give the Hulk a fucking Oscar. Why not? All right. Best Supporting Actress. Jennifer Jason Lee, The Hateful Eight. Rooney Mara, Carol. Rachel McAdams, Spotlight. Uh, Alicia Vikander, The Danish Girl. Or Kate Winslet for Steve Jobs. Oh, man. That's a tough one. Um, that'd be cool if Jennifer Jason Lee got it. It's like, hey... You can make like a bunch of references to she's all that. She's like, I was Lainey Boggs and now I'm beautiful. I took off my pink colored <laughs> overalls and I'm in the hateful eight and people can remember me again. And then be like, make it Josie's in the pussycats joke. And she'll be like, fuck you. Um, Rooney Mara is an excellent actor. I, I don't know about Carol though. Rachel McAdams is a good actress. Spotlight. Everyone did very, very good. And I understand, but I don't know how much she, she upped her game. And if it was something it might, it might actually be obvious, but once again, we just haven't seen it. Um, Vikander for the Danish girl. I don't know. Kate Winslet for Steve jobs. I hear she does a fantastic job too, but I just don't see Steve jobs being like Oscar bait this year. Cause it just didn't, wasn't received super well. Mm-hmm. Um, this is really a shot in the dark, but. I don't know. Let's go with the Danish girl. I'm, I'm basing it on nothing. How about you? I will go with Rooney Mara. Ooh, interesting. You want Zoe Barnes to get a Oscar. They could be. Why? Huh? Why not? Why not? <laughs> I really don't think it's going to happen. But... Uh, directing Adam McKay, The Big Short, George Miller, Mad Max, Alejandra G. Iranitu, The Revenant, uh, Abraham. Abrahamson for The Room and Tom McCarthy for Spotlight. This is the hardest category because honestly, Adam McKay did something really interesting with The Big Short. He made a very different type of movie, used a lot of weird tricks and shit to make like really boring shit semi-compelling. It was just like offset with the horrible narration from Ryan Gosling. It was my biggest problem with the film. But Mad Max Fury Road is a goddamn spectacle masterpiece that took, you know, years of this old man's life I think life they got to give it to George Miller. Like this... I, you if just said gonna, you just said a Revenant was your fucking pick for this for for best picture. This is best director. Oh, best director. I thought Revenant. I actually think Revenant might take it. I don't think I they're think gonna so. give it to Fury Road. I think it's gonna be a bunch of bullshit. You don't think they'll give it to him? I I would really like to see them give it to him. So I'm gonna choose that one. All right, we got SS for Fury Road, and I'm gonna go with Revenant. Revenant's Revenant is go- equally as gorgeous as Mad Max, just in a different way. But the story of Mad Max, I just had more fun watching Mad Max. 
I think. That um, was a spectacle for sure. Room, I mean, Room and Spotlight both have really strong opportunities here to win. Um, I just don't see, like, The Big Short, which is really great and had interesting things and was different. I just don't see it beating Room. Um, and But the thing is, like, I want, I want George Miller to win. I should say that. Animated feature, uh, we can skip out. Um, costume design, um, Carol, Cinderella, Danish Girl, Mad Max, Fury Road, and The Revenant. Revenant has a good shot here. Mad Max has a really good shot here. I love Mad Max's um, outfits. I'm going to go with them. For costume design? Yeah. Cinderella might win. Fuck them. <laughs> Revenant's costume design was cool, too. I'm going to go with Mad Max. All right. We got, we got there's two on that. Documentary feature. Uh, Amy, Cartel Land, uh, The Look of Silence, What Happened, Miss Simone, Winter on Fire. It is a hard one for me because I want, I, I really loved Amy, but I'm going to go with What Happened, Miss Simone. It was, it was amazing. Uh, man, I'm just doing a shot in the dark here. Um, go with Amy. Sure. Amy it is. Yeah. Um, but Amy Winehouse's addiction. Do you know when she was so fucked up that like detoxing is what killed her? Interesting stuff. She was also bulimic and then was unable to process things properly. Documentary short, we can skip. Make him hair scowling, we can skip. Original song, ugh. Earned it, Fifty Shades of Grey. Manta Ray, uh, Racing Extinction. Simple song number three, great song. Youth, uh, Till It Happens to You, The Hunting Ground, and Writings on the Wall, Spectre. Where the fuck is Straight Outta Compton? Songs for Straight Outta Compton. They had really good songs on, like maybe like, three really good songs on the album and they didn't put any of it on there. It sucked. Um, writings on the wall for Spectre. I don't give a fuck. Fuck all that shit. Fuck, fuck animated short sound. I think, editing. I think we've kind of hit all the main ones. No, there's a, there, there's the visual effects ones. The ones I actually want to do. Okay, so so okay. sound editing is something that I think Mad Max did so, so, so well, but one movie made soundscapes that were just fucking plush and nostalgic and gorgeous. And that was the force awakens. I'm going to give it to force awakens. I'll back that. All right. So we got two for that. Um, the, uh, for film editing, this is an interesting one film editing. Cause the big short was chopped up and really interesting, weird, but mad max also had some of the most interesting editing I've ever seen as well. I have no idea why the star Wars of force awakens is even nominated. It had horrible editing. Um, no, it had very precise editing, which I did not like a spotlight, very original star Wars editing. Yeah. Um, the revenant and revenant was edited. Actually, I would argue poorly. It was probably too long and could have had some shit cut out and spotlight. I'm not sure. Uh, but Mad Max free road, the editing is what like the card, like having his wife, who's a non action person edit that action movie made it so interesting, but the big short has really fantastic, interesting cuts too. And I hate to downplay what the big short has done, but I, I'm going to give it to Mad Max free road. I think that was like really beautiful and artistic. I'm going to give it to the big short. Nice. All right. And... Uh, best original score, Bridge of Spies, Carol, Hateful Eight, Sicario, or Star Wars, The Force Awakens. I'm going with Star Wars. You and me both, sir. It, uh, underratedly beautiful score. Uh, Sicario and Hateful Eight also had very good, um, very good um, scores as well. Um, production design, uh, we can skip that. We'll go with visual effects. Now, this one's really interesting because for visual effects, it's you have to think of the visual effects that you don't see. That, okay, that, how do I explain? Okay, you need to think about the ones that are not obviously visual effects. The stuff that, that they add in CG that you don't realize is CG, that's what visual effects really needs to, to do. So instantly, when I see visual effects, we'll go through the category, Ex Machina, Mad Max, Martian, Revenant, and Star Wars. Instantly, I want to say Ex Machina, because that was in your face. It was obvious in a lot of evidence in scenes, less obvious in others. They played with it subtly and beautifully, and they made it believable. But then Mad Max, there was a lot of CG in that movie, but you couldn't tell like 80% of the time when you were seeing CG. You know what I mean? And then the Star Wars, uh, I mean, Star Wars is Star Wars. So for I don't want to give it to the Martian. Fuck you, seriously? It, it, it actually made me feel like I was on another planet because it was subtle. There wasn't... Ah, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, there was a, there was a lot of like practical effects and yeah, just on the planets and uh, they blended even, like, it really well. They did a really good job with it. And, but did and you it made it? Yeah, go ahead. 
I was going to say it made it almost feel like it's something that could be a reality, like right now, like someone could go to Mars. Yes. Okay. This could be a real thing. But so did Mad Max make you feel like they're in that environment too? Yeah, the fucking, like the crazy guy with the guitar on the giant thing. That's you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> See, you'd be rocking out but, like disconnected it, 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 it was cool but but don't get me wrong it was it was something that uh i, I don't know hmm it, it's a hard one because you can go either direction with it like is it the the most epic shit that that looks real or is it the stuff that's like subtle and makes you feel like you're i told this- that's the thing i said what my standard was but you, everyone has their own standard i'm gonna say the martian because they need to give them something this year all right um, I like The Martian. That was good. Uh, best Adapted Screenplay. The Big Short, Brooklyn, Carol, The Martian Room. Why is Straight Outta Compton not nominated here? Why isn't it anywhere? Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm so sorry. Original Screenplay, Straight Outta Compton. Um, oh, is it? But I think Bridge of Spies might be a better screenplay. Actually, Spotlight's a better screenplay. Actually, Ex Machina is a better screenplay. Is the only screenplay. nomination they gave to Straight Outta Compton? I think it Compton? is, yeah. yeah. Then maybe it'll win that one. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, I'll say best original screenplay though, maybe Ex Machina, maybe Spotlight. Um, I'm gonna go with Ex Machina. I just really love that movie. How about you? Straight out of Compton. Hella. And for last one, best cinematography, my favorite category: Carol, Hateful Eight, Mad Max, Revenant, Sicario. I am going Mad Max all fucking day. Beautiful movie. Some of the best, some of the best cinematography I've ever seen. Definitely. Yeah, I'll go with Mad Max. All right, so we have our picks down. They'll be on rafflecast.com. You guys can follow us there. Make sure you join us on our on the Rafflecast regular. Is this an uncut? This seemed this like a, this seemed like a we did we did like a Rafflecast here. It kind of went into a regular Rafflecast. Should, <laughs> should the uncut be us just talking about fucking um, what's it called, making a murderer? Should the uncut be about talking about making a murderer? Yeah. What do you think? I don't know, man. Like this, this kind of turned into. This a, might be Rolfcast. This might be Rolfcast uncut. But until next time, we remain podcasting. Right.